and welcome to a freshly grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to freshly grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? Welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How you doing, bro, Sam? That's a nice jumper. What's that? Thank you, bro, <laughs> Faisal. Just a jumper. <laughs> it looks nice, Alam Barik. You've been to Thank America you, lately? Uh, have I been to America lately? Not recently as such. Um, not oh, recently. Is it when you were there, you picked it up as a souvenir when you went to Beverly Hills, right? No, you know, there's, they created something called online shopping. You can literally buy <laughs> things from all over the world. I got this from uh, America. Oh, nice. And it says Be- Beverly Hills on it, and uh, but I didn't go there. I ordered it online. So, um, ah. so uh, what's, mir- uh, how would you like about Beverly Hills? So this is this uh, good question. So this jumper is actually um, from a brand that I follow and love a lot. Have you heard of the restaurant Nobu? Nobu? I have heard of it. I've only heard of it. Have you been to Nobu? It's a nice sushi place. Oh, no, I haven't been there. There's one actually in a uh, couple have of you Dubai, been there? I think I believe. Um, but but the um, I find the the owner's story very inspiring, and he's got his own uh, clothing range, and this is from it. Oh, nice. He. Um I know that he uh, got investment from um, Robert De Niro. Yeah, that is actually really interesting, story, isn't it? Well, I don't know much about the story other than he was a chef. Robert De Niro went there, tried his food, liked it, invested, and now it's what it is today. Is that the? Yeah, you, that's the literally story? that's the gist of it. So he, um, Robert De Niro used to go to his restaurant and um, and loved it basically and wanted to invest in it. Um, I don't think he wanted the investment straight away, but after a period of time, they became friends uh, and he ended up investing. And even to this day, it's still expanding globally, uh, hotels and restaurants. Um, and they do very well. They've recently they opened a new one in London, in uh, Portman Square, which I went to recently. Beautiful. Really nice. Really, really I've good. Been to, I've, I've, you know, opposite Nobu, there's... Um, in, in uh, What's that other... Do you know the, uh, the restaurant I'm talking about, opposite Nobu in London? Which one? Um, Whereabouts in? I'll have to I'll have to ask my wife. Yeah, you got there's so many restaurants and stuff in London. Uh, no, but directly opposite Nobu. There's a f- there's a couple of Nobus though. So which one? Oh, I I thought there was only one Nobu. Uh, um, what's the what's, is it nice the other one? Yeah, they do like upstairs. They do um, Pan Asian. Downstairs, they do like Chinese. No, downstairs they do uh, Italian. And no one yeah. goes to the Italian one. Oh, um, Novikov. Novikov. Yeah, I've been there a couple yeah. of times. Okay, so you've, yeah, so you've, yeah, so Novikov's I'm fantastic. I'm dabbled, yeah. bro. I've dabbled. I, I've never been to the Italian Novikov. I'm, never, I'm not that interested no, no, in this, but yeah, yeah, Novikov's good, yeah. So um, uh, I uh, the the one time I went to Novikov was my the first time I went there my wife what took did you me call on it, a, sorry? my wife took me on a date uh, just uh, I think like I, I don't know there was like some kind of special occasion I can't remember what what it was and um, we went there and that was the first time I tried it and we 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 were sat in like a really nice area where right next to the glass we can see like the live crabs and stuff so that was lovely I went there before and um, it was a nice outfit I was wearing but I, it was technically I was wearing joggers. They were black joggers. They looked smart, but I got turned away on the door. It's annoying because man. of it, which was frustrating. Yeah, but yeah, you have to wear uh, smarter clothes. Yeah, but yeah. So Nobu have restaurants. I mean hotels. Yes. What is it called? Is it called Nobu Hotel? Yeah. Really? I've Hotel, never seen yeah. that. There's um, there's a couple in London. Yeah, there's uh, one in um, there's one in uh, East London, which is really nice. There's a new one in Portman Square. Um, there's a couple. Have you been? Have you been to the hotels? I've never, never stayed in the hotel. I'd like to. I think it's um, for me when I stay somewhere nice. I like there to be like a swimming pool and a spa. And Nobu don't have that, oh, which I is know. cool. But I feel like if you're spending like a premium on like a on a room, which is sometimes you know for the occasion is nice to do, I feel like I, I like to have like a swimming pool involved in it. I think it adds to the experience. 
so that's that's why I've never booked a, a hotel in um, Nobu because there's no swimming pool. I do like a good hotel. Like when you're traveling, it's nice to just like be a bit more comfortable. And there's been times where I think I don't know if I mentioned it with you on a podcast or somewhere else, but like we've gone we've gone on holiday and there's not necessarily been like a, a rating system. Like I suppose like an official rating system. So like we you book a hotel and it's like they'll call themselves a five star hotel and you go there and like the shower water wasn't even hot. Like there was like it felt it looked like the bed sheets hadn't even been changed. It was it was really rough, man. And they call themselves five star. So we can't we ended up checking out and then going to a Radisson Blue. And from that holiday I always made sure um, and the Radisson Blue is like fairly priced as well. It's not exactly like we're going to like a noble hotel. But from that um, holiday, I always make sure that I go to a brand that I just know the name of because Radisson will have to uphold standards regardless where they are in the world because of their name. Whereas if you go to like a random like one-off hotel that's n- you know isn't a brand, that's all they are is just that hotel. I suppose like you don't know where they're getting their rating from. So I learned a lesson there. Yeah, you run the risk, definitely. I think when you book a hotel, it's definitely good to really look at reviews and really study. I think also, like, before you, before you get a hotel, you can actually, like, you can go on YouTube and search the name of the hotel and the type of room you want to get, and they can. there's, there's always, like, someone who's done a review or someone who's... Or there's a do- yeah, there's, you can always do a bit of research on a, on a hotel before booking it because it is a risky business sometimes. Um, do you know what, Rui? We've spoken a lot on Fresh Uganda about like um, things that we like to indulge in. But I know that you're a very smart man. In fact, I actually recently released a clip from the um, podcast that done quite um, a few numbers on like TikTok and stuff. And what we were talking about last week on the podcast is we were saying that like any time I've had an experience um, or like being around wealthy people, what I've like, uh, and when I say that, I mean like you know the extreme wealthy people. What yeah. I notice about them is that. Um, they will indulge in uh, some things because they can and um, the things that they value, but they're also smarter than the, uh, than the layman when it comes to things that the layman probably doesn't um, care about, right? And so we were giving some examples, like there's this guy online, very wealthy, but he only buys, uh, you'd be surprised, but he only buys bars of soap as opposed to body wash. And he says that he just can't understand the value of money. He just can't forgive himself because the value of money you get out of bar of soap, for every bar of soap that you buy and you get more intense city out of uh, you'd have to buy like you know um five bottles of shower you can go for five bottles of shower joe for every like one bottle of one bar of soap plus on top of that a bar of soap would be like 50p and a bottle of shower joe is three pound fifty and so it's like you know 8x the price and so mathematics even though this guy's a multi-millionaire and and then i was talking about another person who i know who like Initially, I was like, oh, hey, man, you should get the ring doorbell. And he was, like, reluctant about it because it's, like, 70 pounds. But this same guy, like, when it will come to, like, he'll buy his mum a car as a gift, like, a a really nice car as well. And so, like, we were saying that these people, like, extremely both people, tend to seem to have the balance, right? Like, for everything that they indulge in, like, for example, for you, you might like a nice hotel when you travel. They seem to be very clever with things that they may... uh, that like other people will be like, oh yeah, I'll spend on this, I'll spend on that, going out or buying coffees and stuff like that. Another guy on like the US equivalent of Dragon's Den, Shark Tank, this guy will invest in designer clothes because he sees the value in high quality clothes, but he said he'll never buy a coffee out because he doesn't see the value in that. So my question to you, bro, is we always talk about these kind of things like, um, you know, like enjoying um, hotels and stuff like that. What things do you say, would you say that you just don't invest in as a, as a like, as a product for your own personal gain that perhaps like the layman would be like uh, or, or generally people normally don't, don't don't really care about is there anything that comes to mind probably there's probably a number of things and my missus quite often makes the comment to me um she's so surprised that i've got something or something that i own is in a particular condition or something when and i, I and i'm quite i actually have i've become quite kind of um i'm gonna use the words t- tight I suppose over the last couple of years, I've really kind of like focused on my saving and and not trying to kind of waste too much money and really being more calculated with, with my spending. So my, my wife always makes comments about how you. I, I can't think of the top of my head of an example necessarily, but there's there's quite a lot of things I hold back on. Um, I broke. I've got a broken dressing gown. Uh, I've got like bit, bits and pieces, things that could very easily be replaced or things that I could do with, which I just sometimes don't really want to spend money on because I like the thought of saving money. In reality, I could afford these things and it would probably be improve my lifestyle or way of life in some way. But I just, I just, yeah, there's, there's probably a, a few things. I've got a broken door 
in the house that I've been meaning to kind of get fixed for a long time. There's lots of bits and pieces that I've just like, in my head, I just try and hold back on spending because I love the thought of just trying to accumulate wealth really and not spend money on, on things I don't really, really want. But as an example of something, I'm not, I'm not, a hundred percent sure what I can think of as examples. I, th- I think most things I'm, I'm just I'm kind of cautious on on spending money on. Like for example, I was talking to my partner um, when I stay in Amsterdam. I always call up the hotel and I always insist on having a uh, a reasonable discount. And um, and I always just make a big point of it. I just feel like I want to get kind of like looked after when I go there. No, not necessarily all about the money, but I, I'd like to have like a, something like I'm getting something good a good value. So I always call up and basically insist I get given a discount and I always kind of uh, make sure I'm kind of supposed to getting the most out of it. So my, my partner was watching me on the phone trying to like just get myself a little discount. And he's thinking, you don't need, why do you need that? You don't need a discount. And uh, I, just, I don't know, I like to just kind of, get, like I said, get the best value out of everything, get everything the best price. Like for example, I, I buy designer clothes. I see it as an investment because I know if I buy something that I really like, it might be expensive, but I know that it holds value as well and I'll be able to sell that on on eBay or Gumtree or privately to a friend. So like, I'm always very careful if I'm, if I want, if I'm going to indulge and spend something, I'm, I'm, there's, 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 a, there's more thought to it. I buy a designer bag, but I know that I can sell it six months later for maybe a couple hundred quid late, less, but I know it's my, my money's still kind of there. So yeah, I suppose I'm, I'm quite calculated. Over the last couple of years, I've had to be. I made, like, made intentions to kind of like start saving and be more kind of sensible. Not that I was ever reckless, but I think it's very easy just to spend here, there, everywhere and, and not kind of um, keep an eye on the pennies. So it, I've learned a lot over the last sort of couple of years, since, I suppose since like lockdown and stuff, um, more so the value of money and, and saving. So it's been, it's been an interesting couple of years just kind of like learning how to save uh, and again, being like, know where to, what to spend your money on and, and what to hold back on. So I don't know if that really answers your question, but it's just something that I'm kind of like learning and, and learning about myself now. Like some things I really like, I don't mind spending some money on. Other things I'm just pretend like I'm completely broken and, and, and ignore it. Yeah, it does answer the question, obviously, because it's like essentially a lifestyle for you rather than like individual decisions. Mm-hmm. I, I've recently thought I'll write a list, and I haven't written it yet, but it's like a mental list at, the, at this point, just to kind of prove a point to myself of things that I, um, I'm gonna try and like promise myself that I'm never gonna purchase unless I see in, like, like, in, like an extreme value in it that I, don't, um, that I currently don't see, right? And so on that list are some, thing, are some things that I, I think um, surprised even me, right? So one of those things on that list is like AirPods. So you know, like I'm like a big techie and I like yeah. to get those kind of things. And I actually did, I have got AirPods actually even now. Um, but you know what, bro? I found some like issues with AirPods here and there. I'm like, they're not like the most consistent. They're, sometimes the battery life's not all that. And so recently when I started like having issues with my current AirPods, bearing in mind that I've had them for a while because they were like the first generation ones. Um, I started using the wired headphones and bro, I just like, you never have issues with them. You never have to charge them. I, it's never got in the way that I have a wire there. And I thought, well, this system isn't broken. And so actually, cause I was thinking about buying AirPods and our principle now, I'm not going to buy AirPods uh, because uh, I, I, the, if I bought AirPods, I would buy them because it would be uh, in slightly more convenient, I guess, but like now I'm not even convinced by that anymore. So why would I, why am I doing it, right? And it can't just be because I have the disposable income to buy AirPods. It's not a good enough reason. And uh, w- however, I do like to, and we've spoken about this before, I think both of us like this, like I do like to invest in a good, a good like aftershave or a smell. And so mm-hmm. I've got another list where it's like things I won't like be beat myself up about. Like if I spend a bit of extra money on some aftershave, I'm happy with that. As long as I can counter it with, I'm not going to buy AirPods because I actually can't be convinced that I need them that much. Another thing is like, um, like uh, right now out here, I'm renting a car because uh, it's kind of like the norm out here to rent a car, especially when you first move out here. And so I, I rent like a pretty bog standard car. I'm not that much into cars, as you know. And, um, but every now and again, you get the temptation because you think, oh, it's only an extra X amount per month and I can just get like a slightly better or bigger car. And so yeah. on that list also is 
upgrading the car. I have no need to. It's got five seats and I've done a big, you know, weekly shop in the car and had a buggy in the car and both the kids and the missus and we haven't struggled with like space. So I try and tell myself all these things like, oh, but I've got a whole family. Sometimes we need to fit things in the boot, but it's not true. So um, even with the car, so that's on the list as well. Unless I've got, unless I'm like planning to buy one outright and it's going to be a long-term investment, I'm going to have the car for a long time. Maybe I would get like a, uh, one that I'm happy with for for for, for a couple of years, but right now that's on the list as well. Um, co uh, recently, I was thinking about like, upgrading my coffee machine to like a really not. You know, I was speaking to you about that again. Like yeah. I am actually content with my coffees, so I've I've that's on the list as well. So I'm trying to like be a bit like more conscious of what I will invest in for myself and what I won't. And um, it's more fun now uh, being less guilty about investing in things. Like I said, the um, the aftershaves or, uh, or or things like that. I, there was some other stuff on the list, but I can't remember what it is now. I was going to say, what else is on the list? There was um, a, a few things, but I I, um, I can't quite remember. Oh, like uh, uh, some, some, some tech stuff for work, like that I don't necessarily need, but I would like, like an extra monitor for my um, laptop that I think would make me more efficient to work. Or like, I want to do some stuff in the studio um, that is a bit, a bit pointless, like people don't see that side of the studio, but I want it to look nice, I want to feel good in my environment when I'm working, so um, those kind of things. Not really clothes as much, you know, I'm not like huge on like having to like constantly invest in clothes, but um, I do like it's things, nice shirt, uh, travel, by the way. travel's on the list, and I don't travel often, but travel is on the list, like with, like with the hotels well, and not stuff like that. Not like, to travel? No, just when I do travel, I don't want to be um, like hard on myself if I'm getting something that makes my life a bit more convenient. Yeah. Uh, an example of that could be like, um, you know, Wi-Fi on the plane. I don't know. Like, it's a bit it's silly to get Wi-Fi that kind of cuts out and you're paying 10, 15 quid for it because it doesn't really always work. But things like that makes it a bit more convenient for me. I don't mind. Like, if I, like something on, like those kind of things. I'm traveling. I'm in the airport. Like, uh, the kids are hungry. Everyone's hungry. Like, I'm not going to go, oh, we're not going to eat at the airport because it's like, oh, let's like pack sandwiches instead. Like, those, which I'm, which is fine. But I, I just rather, when I'm traveling, I don't like to be stressed. I know I'm bad under stress. So I'd rather yeah. like spend the money when I'm like in those environments. So I'm yeah. not going to be mad at myself if I, if I, if I do those things. Yeah, interesting. I've thought of one example, actually, something that happened, and it's not going to make me sound very good. I probably regret saying it, but I'll say it anyway. There's an example of, of scrimping in certain areas. I was at the park the other day, and my missus went off to get some water for the kids. She came back with two bottles of water, and I was annoyed because I said they could have shared one bottle. And she was like, and she was like are, you take, are you joking? I was like, no, they could have shared one bottle. We're going home soon anyway. And I was, I was like looking at that bo extra bottle as like a, an inconvenience of my cost. And she hasn't really let me get away with it. But I was, I was almost like a little bit annoyed that she brought two bottles of water instead of one for my children. And that's an, that's an example of areas in my life that I, I, I scrimp and, and hold back on a little bit. But um, Bro, that's not a bad example that. because... Um, <laughs> out, shall I tell you why? Out here, you have to drink bottled water, um, even in the house. And yeah. so there's like solutions for it, right? Like everyone has water tanks in the house. So it makes it slightly cheaper. And stuff like that. But like today I went out uh, after we shot the inner circle, went out to uh, get some food. And I was annoyed with myself for not bringing uh, my water from home, which I've never like ever, I've always, every time I go out, I'll, I'll buy water wherever I am. But here it really like, you, 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 first of all, you drink so much because it's so hot. And everywhere you go, you're constantly buying water. And so I got to the place and I thought, oh, like, why didn't I bring my water? So I've kind of become like that because my missus was telling me about that. She was like, why don't you just carry water wherever you go out? Like, is one, it's like, it makes so much sense if you're always buying water out. So I kind of resonate with you on that now. And it, it feels weird to say that because it does feel you are conscious of being like, you want to be frugal and you don't want to be stingy. But this I think like it. when you find something that works for you, it's silly to, if you've got bottled water at home, it's silly to go out and buy bottled water when you've literally got bottled water you can, anyway, yeah. you know It's almost mean? like an extreme, extreme uh, example because we are just talking about water and it's ultimately, it's not going to go to waste and it'll be drunk and it'll be good. But that, that's like how I've got my mind in this mindset of just not spending where you don't, where you don't need to. And my thought was, we're at the park, they can share a bottle though, but, but everyone would be happy. Two, two is a, an, an extra cost that I don't really want to deal with. But... Um, it was one pound. It was a smart water. You know, I think that's quite expensive. When you're trying to save, the pennies look after themselves. So, um, 
So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, stingy, uh, maybe. it's a shame because I, I, I kind of feel like I'm learning now at the big age of 28. I'm learning um, better money habits now. But I'm, gl- I'm, I'm grateful at the same time because then the rest of my life, hopefully, I'll start to be uh, better. I see people in my life who are like really clever with and smart. And when I see them I'm, and some of the small decisions I make and then I see like how un, like not stressed they are, it kind of makes sense. Like... Um, yeah, it kind of makes sense, man. Bro, even like if you think on a bigger level, like way bigger than we're talking, um, you know, like for example, if you was going to get uh, a Range Rover and then like the equivalent of a Range Rover in like Toyota would be like a RAV4, right? So it's like a 4x4 four four Toyota. Um, if you didn't care that much about cars slash like how you feel in a car, how you look in a car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then even I know people who would get the RAV4 over the Range, not because they prefer the RAV4, but because if there, if something happens to the range, um, it's a lot more expensive to fix, whereas with Toyota, the parts are a lot easy, easier to source, a lot cheaper to fix, and stuff like that. And it's those small decisions I see people making in their life, and I'm like, it, it, it really makes sense when, you know that saying, more money, more problems? It's like, you invest in something that's nicer, but you are gonna get more problems, whereas the person who's got the RAV4, which is a beautiful car, and it's like, as expensive as a range if you get a top-notch one. Um, you might not turn heads when you're driving down the road, but who's laughing last when something happens to the car and it's a lot easier to get fixed? So you're less, you know if you're driving a range or a G-Wagon, which are beautiful cars and I don't want to buy, like, um, I don't want to say something I regret in case one day I end up investing in one of them. Uh, but if you scratch the alloys of a G-Wagon, you're going to be a lot more upset than if you scratch the alloys of a Toyota. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It's inconvenient either way. I mean, it's, it's, it's ultimately down to the person's kind of taste and what they want, isn't it? Some people yeah, like, true. some people's idea of, of success is getting into one of those cars and, 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 that, and that's it. Other people, they're aiming for so much more and, and, and bigger. I know people who are extremely successful that don't have like a statement car. But, and they don't have, they don't appear to be very successful necessarily. But then, but I know, you know, what they have asset-wise and properties, and and it's just it's crazy. But then that these people don't necessarily, they're not really into like a, the lifestyle or the image or anything. Then other people are. I think it's down to people's taste, what you're into, what your hobbies are. You, you run a risk of having a bit more of an expensive car, and and you know, if you do crash it, yeah, it's more expensive. But like I said, some people was like idea of when you do get money, that's that's why I want it, so I can have that car and. And you know that's, yeah, that's exactly. some people's uh, goals, and and uh, everyone's entitled to have their own sort of thing. They're up, they're you know that they're into, and they they spend their money on. I think it's just about being sensible. I think for me, I like to think about long term a lot more than than short term now. And so like, imagine like where I want to be in twenty years, thirty years. What kind of lifestyle I want, what I, how I want things to be. Ultimately, we're setting ourselves up f- for for the future. So rather than trying to like spend too much money and on on things that. It, you know, ultimately, it's liabilities when you're young, rather than trying to save money and, and you know obtain some assets that really your your older self are going to be so grateful for. Um, so I think it's about trying to think about when you're a bit older, when you're younger, um, when you, you have less energy and less kind of like desire to go out and work and get things done. I think you we ultimately we want to, you know, not that we're promised old age, but we want to try. I think we, the idea is to try to set ourselves up for when we are a bit older rather than trying to like indulge and enjoy it too much when we're young. I think it's about kind of making life comfortable for, for the long run rather than that short term. That's, I think that's, that's my kind of like mindset with, with finance and savings and money now. Just that, let's think about making you know, life comfortable as we get a bit older rather than kind of indulging and splashing too much, too much when you're young. You know? Hey guys, just a quick interruption here in this week's episode to say, well, what do we want to say, Kaya? We want to invite people to the inner circle, man. It's an invitation. Yeah. Because right now you're probably listening to Faisal and Sam having a natter. Yeah. Whereas the inner circle is a bit more of a, a quiet word in your ear. Yeah, a quiet word in your yeah. ear. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a whisper. Just, just a non, just come, yeah. non-creepy. Yeah. You like sugar in your <laughs> fresh juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go to school. Yeah, that, yeah, kind exactly. that kind of stuff. That's always. What, what did we speak about in this week's episode? We spoke of about circle? Um, the education bro- system. broken education system yep. in in the UK because yep. I don't know about it anywhere else in the UK. Yep. Um, and whether juice, whether fresh juice is really fresh or sugared or not. Yeah, and we also spoke about uh, the the heat wave. Briefly. Yeah, the melting runways. 
and stuff. Yeah, and the melting bins. And melting yeah. bins. So guys, if you want to have a nice, relaxed conversation with us and you just want to put um, some more freshly grounded in your ears when you're driving, head over to the Inner Circle. You could do that by going to freshlygrounded.com forward slash Inner Circle and we'll let you get back to the episode. Goodbye. We're talking about life being comfortable. Were you in the UK this week when that big heat wave day happened or were you in, in Italy? In, no, Amsterdam. I was in, I was in Amsterdam. And it was ah, really, okay. it was very hot. It was extremely hot. Uh, in Amsterdam as well? Yeah, yeah. And is, were your family obviously still in the UK? What did they say? How was it that day? There, they, there was like uh, 41 fires or boys something. Boys finished early from school. They were just having ice lollies, chilling at home. It was, yeah, everyone was just, everyone was obviously complaining about how hot it was. And it was, uh, a few of the shops have got aircon. I think you obviously sent me a message about the aircon. I did send you a message about the aircon. Not all yeah. of them. Um, but yeah, it was, do you know what? It was, it was so hot. I remember I, from, for my day, I had the first half of the day quite relaxed, trying to like enjoy the sun. And then we had work to do and I was doing bits all day in the work. It just felt like I was working in an oven, to be honest. It was, it was, it was unbearable. It was really, really hot. Uh, I think it, 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 if, if it's really hot and you've got aircon nearby or you've got a swimming pool or a beach nearby, it's manageable. But I think when you're in a, in a building or in the city and it's hot, it's just unbearable. But yeah, so it was hot. You're used to it now, it, are you? It, what's the AC system l- l- like in Amsterdam? Is it AC'd up or not really? It's like London. One of the, one of the shops has AC. So that was that was uh, perfect. Uh, the other ones were okay, um, like shaded and stuff. But um, the AC one, yeah. It's when, you, when you're hot and you walk into a shop with, with air conditioning, there's nothing quite like that feeling, to be honest. Um, they were okay. They were okay. They weren't too bad. But outside, it was just, it was just hot. No, everyone seemed to just like dis- disappear. It was quite quiet, to be honest. Yeah, man, you got to stay in. Yeah. What about yourself? Was it hot for you? Well, the thing is here, there's AC everywhere, isn't it? Uh, mm. But, uh, and actually when you go into certain places here, you feel cold, like inside. So, yeah. which is weird because then you come outside and you're feeling really hot. Uh, the, 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 I was like talking to my brothers and sisters on that day and I was like saying to them, uh, like, some of the things that help here or like uh yeah like for example drinking water it sounds obvious but drinking small amounts of water throughout the day as opposed to gulping lots of water apparently if you gulp lots of water at once it kind of all goes to your stomach whereas you stay more hydrated if you drink small amounts throughout the day uh, people say stuff like close your curtains if you're not if you're not in certain rooms because then the shade the the sun it um the heat of the sun doesn't come into the house as much and stuff like that so um but bro, here people stay indoors during the days. Like, yeah, for the most part, you don't see people out during the day at all. It, and it's weird because when I first got here, in, in a lot of the things close for the summer to prepare for the winter. Whereas in the UK, what we're used to is like things not being really uh, uh, open in the winter because they're preparing for like for the summer. Yeah, and that was that was tough to get used to. And I'm still getting used to people saying things like today I had a conversation with my friend and he was like, oh, this coffee shop has a really nice garden area. That'll be really nice in the winter. And it's, it's, it feels okay. weird to hear that. Like, why would that be nice in the winter? But here, apparently the winter here, which I've not experienced, apparently is beautiful. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, nice. How, how are the kids uh, adapting to the, the, the heat? They're okay because we try not to take them out too much during the day. But Zachary loves it, bro. Like I'll show you video. I'll send you videos on WhatsApp and stuff in a minute after our, um, after our chat. And like he'll be out with his like sunglasses and in his vest and just like walking along the roads and stuff. So he Zachary is really like taken to it well. Uh, as is Khalil, but obviously he's a lot smaller. But yeah, they're fine with it because we just try to be careful where we take them and don't go out. Gen- like the the peak of the heat is straight after the hot. After the hot is, is you stand outside, bro, and you're just sweating, just standing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So you're in, you're inside most of the day. So I go to the mosque, that's the only time during the days when I'm out, uh, and I go on my scooter. So I do experience that heat at that point, and even that is quite unbearable, even though it's just as well. There came a point where I started driving to the mosque, because it was, it was too hot to even, and it was only like a three or four minute scooter ride, but it just it was even too hot for that. But recently they've blocked off one of the roads because they're doing roadworks on it, so it's a lot more awkward to drive. So I'm back on the scooter and just got a firm it, which is not too bad. Is it, today it's like windy, so it's hot wind, which is again something new. Even when it rains, it's like hot rain almost. 
and I'm not experiencing yeah. those things being in the UK. So it's nice. It's nice experiencing different weathers and stuff, and like trying to deep like the creation of Allah and how diverse He's made um, the world and stuff. It's quite interesting. So it's feel, it feels nice. Hundred percent. And that, how are you? How are you settling into Dubai? Feel good? Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, slowly but surely. It's, it's yeah, nice, yeah. bro. Like I'm, 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 I love it here, man. To be honest, along with yeah. verdict. So I'm like an advocate. I'm an advocate of like I've told you. Like I'm like desperate for you to move out here and and um, my brothers and sisters. I feel like it's a very difficult step. But if anyone were to do it, they wouldn't regret it. And I think that people even know that they wouldn't regret it. But it, uh, you can't deny how big of a step it is. And it takes like a yeah. real risk to like move your whole life from one country to another. So I understand that. But I do feel like anybody who would do it would definitely be grateful that they did it. And so that's why I'm so like eager for you to do it and stuff. I know you would love it. And, and, and you're in a position that a lot of people aren't in. Uh, which is obviously that you kind of can run things in your own time. Obviously, you have to set things up and stuff like that. But yeah, I think it would be beneficial for loads of reasons, man. Loads of reasons. The obvious reasons, like the schooling system here, bro. Like, you know, we spoke about that numerous times, you and I. Mm. That kind of stuff is just like a lot more relax, uh, uh, better, basically, what, what's being taught and what's not being taught. You can't deny that and certain other things. So, yeah. yeah. When uh, when are the kids starting school and stuff? Zachary should be starting nursery in September, inshallah. Nursery in September. Okay, amazing. That should be the case. So that'll be nice. Have you confirmed um, the nursery? You, that's that's why I say should because that's kind of like in the process right now. Okay. Just sorting out like places and all that kind of stuff. But inshallah, if all goes well, he should be, he should be in nursery by September. We did have the option of putting Khalil in nursery, but when I don't think right now we're gonna we might change our minds later. But for now, we're gonna keep. Clear at home. I mean, Zachary needs it. He's like bouncing off the walls here. Yeah. So for him, I think it's like important it's, to get. Some will that be full to. full time or a few days a week? I think it's full time, but f but but part time hours. So I believe it's yeah. four hours a day. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it means that he'll get to have his morning here or something like that. I have. I don't know. My wife knows the hours and stuff, but I believe it's part time hours, but but, yeah. but five days a week. Uh, I was gonna say I was gonna say uh, kind of shifting topics. I saw this post on social media. I wanted to get your take on it. I thought it was really interesting. It's semi-serious, but I thought it was quite cool. I never looked at things in that perspective. So it was a post from a snippet of another podcast of this author from the Diary of a CEO. And this author, what he said is, he said, "I'm gonna have to try and remember it now." Uh, people don't. Uh, you don't lose people because of conflict. Uh, yeah, something like the lose wasn't the word, but uh, you don't lose people because of conflict, you lose them because of neglect. And I started thinking about that. And the more I was deeping it, I was thinking how true it is that, that neglect is one of, is the true kind of uh, danger in the world as opposed to conflict and sometimes we try and avoid conflict because we think it's going to like ruin relationships and stuff but if you think about it in Islamic terms like when you neglect yourself from socializing and from people you know they say that the shaitan is closer to you when you are alone uh, when you neglect yourself from acts of worship you do go in a downward spiral and stuff like that but then when you even think about it from a business perspective i'm sure you've had moments with your staff where staff have felt undervalued well i'm not saying i'm sure you have because i know you want to really tight shit but <laughs> but uh, sometimes you think if i have a conflict with my staff they're going to maybe want to leave but actually conflict is not really an issue as long as you deal with it in the right way but i suppose neglect would be a bigger issue like when someone feels that they're being undervalued or like they're not growing and stuff like that what do you think about that i, I, I was kind of deep in that quote yeah, that's interesting. When you said it, it, it made me think as well about um, just a couple of circumstances just that I've been in, obviously, with work and stuff. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I think if someone, I think someone can get neglected, I think maybe if they are neglected, I think it's, it's almost like a, a two way street sometimes and um, communication, good communication with people, it kind of it works both ways for someone to be com completely neglected. There's definitely some communication breakdown there, but I mean, I can definitely relate to that. Why people have had a lot of people get frustrated without going into it in too much detail. A lot of people get frustrated because they want more recognition and, and more attention, more more love, more energy. Um, in fact, that's what everyone wants, strangely enough. Um, 
And it's about balancing that and finding out what people's expectations and, and ultimately what you can give people. But yeah, if someone gets neglected, I suppose I can, uh, yeah, they get neg- neglected and, and then they um, they don't feel part of it. And uh, yeah, it causes, it causes breakdown big time. How many issues do you see in the world as well when people are having an argument because there's even a neglect of conversation or they feel neglected because they haven't been communicated to and they start making assumptions from that. There you go. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Just that communication breakdown and, and making uh, making assumptions and, and just a down, it's a downward spiral just come off the back of, 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 of lack of communication, bad communication. Um, yeah, even bad communication is such a big big thing. We don't, we're not taught in schools like the best forms of communication and how to maneuver certain conversations as well a conflict the skill of of communication and and also like when you're talking about conflict almost like welcoming those conversations that are quite difficult and that that do have that that conflict in it and actually how important those conversations are are for people's relationships and for teams and societies and communities and whatever else um but communication is everything. I think, and when you master, when you master, not that you can master it, or not that I've mastered it, or but when you when you realise that everything is based on communication, and you really make an effort of of of, of working on communication and bettering bettering your own communication, your your life will improve like hundred um, percent. Everyone's life would, but that, that, yeah, without that and all the problems that come that can ar- arise from from not communicating properly and assumptions and everything like you like you mentioned, yeah, deadly. Deadly, and it's something that I kind of see a lot with my own problems and stuff. Just issues that don't get dealt with, and problems that haven't been brought up to the surface and, and spoken about. And instead, it, things get left, and then people move apart. And uh, yeah, neglect comes in. It even turns people away from the religion. Uh, bad communication, doesn't it? Because when our religion obviously tells us to advise one another and so on and so forth. And how many people do you see? not always at the fault of the person who's approaching it, but sometimes because of bad communication, you turn people away from the religion and that's a really dangerous aspect as well. And when yeah. you see kind of the most, the more knowledgeable people approach conversation, they seem to yeah. approach it with a lot more wisdom and softness and it seems to work better. I think, I think, I think communication is, is wisdom and softness like nine times out of 10. I think it's about using wisdom because everyone, everyone's kind of different and I think you have to kind of work out how everyone how everyone responds to things and that what people want to hear and, and how people need to hear something sometimes so I, I feel like communication is is ultimately applying wisdom in dealing with lots of different people who need to be spoken to and dealt with and, and treated almost slightly differently so I think wisdom comes into it and definitely example of like telling someone something you're coming from such a good place but how you say it how you communicate it is wrong and hasn't done in the right way. The other person can be can completely spin the other person the other way. And although the intention was good, the communication was bad. And before you know it, you yeah issues. Um, Some of the best communicators that I know that have uh, even approached me with uh, issues or something or, or stuff like that. Are, the best communicators I know they communicate through questions, and the great thing about that is that it helps you make a dis- it helps you come to the conclusion yourself in your own mind. And then you don't feel attacked because no somebody's not telling you something. They've just helped you come to that conclusion yourself. It's like what yeah. therapists do. How did that make you feel and stuff like that? And so I've yeah. had times at work where someone's gone, "Why? What made you make that decision? Or did you think? About, did you think? Do you think that that could have any negative effects and stuff like that?" And then that that what they're doing is they're inviting me to to think for myself. I imagine in your yeah. world that helps a lot as well. Like why? Like do you think? Uh, what made you not do this uh, and stuff like that? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I'm just uh, I've been dealing with, the, with with something this morning, uh, which is all about communication. And it's funny that it, the problem was left at we are all going to come together and we're going to have a probably quite an uncomfortable, awkward conversation. But there's obviously everyone's got their own pers- perspective and their own issues. We're going to come together and we're going to communicate and we're going to be very open. And it's, like I said, it's going to be probably a bit uncomfortable and maybe some people have got to say some things that not everyone wants to hear, but. It's come together, communicate, open it all up, and and kind of move on from there. So, forever just trying to like master the skill of of just keeping lots of people happy when there's always lots of different bits and pieces causing problems. And it's just about again just keeping that open playing field of communication and and just yeah, just trying to just trying to figure it out. To be honest, bro. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes time to figure. It out. I think it's a lifelong mission. 
100%. Now, Sam, do you recognise the shirt that I'm wearing? Yeah, I did actually say you, you have a nice shirt and you missed me saying it, but I said you have a nice shirt and it's the uh, episode 100, isn't it? That's right. And I think this is one of the first times I've worn it since episode 100. It sits in my cupboard. It's iconic. I actually really like it. And I love the blue, the blue Nikes that you had to go with it. I the think Air you gave Forces, them away. yeah. No, they were Air, they were Air Max. 90. Air Max, sorry. I, yeah, you're right. Did I, I, I gave them away. I did give them away. I know, which is crazy because they're like my. I thought they were the best shoes you had. Did you give them away Who'd when you went to Dubai? I'm pretty sure you said you gave them to your, or maybe you sold them or something. No, I definitely gave them away, but I can't remember to who. But yeah, you're right. They were really nice. Sister's weren't they? brother, maybe. Yeah, they were very nice. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. My, did you say my sister's brother? Potentially. That would work out as my brother too, or. Your sorry, yeah. So your sorry, sorry. Your wife's brother. Your wife's brother. <laughs> <laughs> your wife's brother, your wife's brother, your wife's brother. Uh, yeah, but anyway, this is the first time I've... Uh, well, no, I've worn it once or twice before, but this is... Uh, I actually <laughs> I actually had it dry cleaned. <laughs> really, yeah? Yeah, because the... Do you know the thobes that I wear? Yeah. I get them dry cleaned because they get ironed in a really nice way and stuff like that. And here there's been some issues where you throw, like, a thobe in the, wa- in the washing machine and it comes out too, like, smaller. Or, like, it's hard to iron them right and they get damaged. So... This time, when I gave my thobes in, I actually gave uh, some of my shirts in as well. So I thought I'll wear them. Nice. That's a good story. Did they come back feeling nice, yeah? Nice and fresh? Yeah, I'm wearing a crisp shirt for an episode of Fresh Uganda. It feels good. You're wearing a dry, clean shirt. You look good for it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And I'm quite happy that I still fit in a shirt that I wore uh, 200 episodes ago, which is like a good few, 2017 or something, wasn't it? Your arm looks quite big in that shirt. Yeah, you well, maybe then to, I don't feel as the gym, much yeah? in it. So. No, I'm talking about strong. Look at that. Look at that. The green sleeve, not the blue sleeve. The green sleeve is. Oh, you can see strong. the green sleeve, but the the camera. That's all can't. I can see. That's yeah. all I can see. No, oh, the yeah. I'll, 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 that's all I can see. Oh, of course, yeah. You have another. Okay. I have another camera. Yeah. Fine, this would be a horrible great. angle if that was the angle that the people watching it at. I was thinking that. I was thinking, does he know that the microphone is covering him completely? Yeah, the really <laughs> bad angle. Yeah. I'm also wearing the uh, Menspire uh, a wax that you gifted me. Do you remember gifting me that just before I left for Dubai? I remember it, yeah. Yeah, I'm wearing that for the first time ages because my hair's not been really long enough to comb over. But this time, when what I begin... What are you doing? Are you, are you growing your hair long now? I don't know. But when I got Do my hair cut, I left the top. Uh, I, I told him not to touch the I top. I can see. I can see. Yeah. You're not a fan. You want it to be shorter nah. again. Nah. Yeah, definitely. You look so much better with it shorter, man. But you know what, bro? The issue is when it's short is that I get gaps in my head that I've noticed. Yeah. I do. I did like it short, and I do think that. I think short, you look stronger short. I think you look stronger short. Well, Much better. We've had we've had many conversations on this podcast where we haven't uh, approved of each other's hairs. <laughs> Namely, probably probably the big one was when I disapproved of you growing your hair out. And I couldn't see the end project in mind. You had a vision and a goal, and you saw it through to the end. And now you look absolutely phenomenal, Allah But it was a rough. It was a rough journey. There were you've times been very when critical I was of my image over the years. You, you've actually made me think about my image a few times. It wasn't this time I grew my hair. The last time I wore glasses, and you kept on saying, "I don't think you should." I don't think you should do what you're doing. And you, you, was, you were so polite about it. But I was like, and then you, then you went to the point of going on my old pictures on Instagram and writing comments saying, you look much nicer here. You look nice here. When I've got short hair. Remember that? Yeah, I, I, I still go to that image sometimes. I know you do. You've Good written memories. it six times. Yeah. I'm but glad yeah, you I, wore my, I wore my hair down for you today. You obviously requested no hair bands. So I wore my hair down for you today. So I hope you appreciate that. I do appreciate it. And I must say that you look French. French. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You look like your name could be Pierre. I would ask you to attempt a French accent, but I'm not going to embarrass you on on, on a world-famous podcast. But you do look French. You could get away with French right now. What have you been... What ethnicities have you been mistaken for? I imagine a lot. A lot, bro, yeah. I was actually asked the other day. Uh, when I had um, short hair, more people, a lot of people said I was Arab, Italian, had Moroccan, a Turkish, French. Now you actually look a bit like Chris D'Elia right now. Do you know who that is? No. I'm gonna get a picture for you. Chris D'Elia. 
you're not going to be able to see this because you can't see the screen. <laughs> so you're going to have to no. imagine. Oh my Whoa, gosh, bro. I'm going to put it on the screen, screen right around. now. I'm going to put it on the screen. Give me a second. Oh, how many, let me screenshot this. I'll say you look like a better you, de you I'll say you look like a better looking version of him. All right, it's on the screen for the people to see. There's a side by side. Oh. <laughs> bro. I can't see though, bro. I need to see. I know, I but I me. can see it. All right, how am I going to show you? Um Can you pick right, your phone up and show me the screen? What I'll do is There you go. Uh Bro, come on, admit it. Who is that? That's a guy called Chris D'Elia. If I, I'm putting you next to he, each other, just do this face, bro. Go like this, like a small, like a bit of a smirk, but more serious. I'm not your clown. I'm not, I'm not performing for you. <laughs> bro, I can't <laughs> believe that. Yeah. That's our clip. That's our viral clip for the episode. Done. <laughs> that feels nice. We got that in the bag. We can go now. Okay. Good. What's your plans for that? What's your plans for the upcoming week, bro? How, how, how's your summer looking? It's, it's coming towards the end of July, August next month. You got any plans so, for the summer? Doing anything big? Yeah, uh, bits and pieces. What so uh, the rest of the week, just working bits and pieces. Just come back from Amsterdam, where we are now launching our fourth shop. So I'm going to go back for the first of September to launch the new shop. So I know I'm doing that at the beginning of September. We've got another salon in Guernsey opening next month. Uh, we've got lots of little bits and pieces. We're going to go to Manchester. We've got a salon opening in Manchester, so I'm going to spend some time in Manchester. So it'll be a nice month of, of new shops. Um, I'm going away with the family in October. And I'm gonna let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, um, that place. Yeah, that place. No, Is no, it? no, 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 oh. no. Are you done with that? Mallorca. Mallorca. Not done with it, but nice. They want some sunshine. Yeah, we're, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm looking at the minute. I'm looking at the minute. Um, I need to do a little family holiday as well. Is that a Spanish so. island, Mallorca? Yes. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. So there's a few bits. Yeah. Nice. Like, nice. Like the boys have just gone on their summer holidays today, so they're okay. now at home for six weeks. So I'll probably um, use as many times as I can to kind of do bits and pieces with the family. Obviously, they're there for a long time now, so I'll factor that in. But yeah, just. Nice summer ahead, really, bro. Got some bits and pieces. All right, bro. We'll, we'll catch up, inshallah, two weeks from now. Two weeks' time. Yeah. Hopefully. Inshallah. It'll be nice. It's lovely chatting to you, bro. Lovely catching up with you, as always. Always and, good. And uh, have fun. Enjoy the summer holidays. Thank you. And uh, I'll look forward to showing you my, my new shirt next episode. Yes. I'm looking forward to seeing it. All right. Take care, bro. Assalamualaikum. Nice one, brother. Assalamualaikum.